Well, today's video on over 50s wisdom, we're going to talk to an upholsterer, a very well-known upholsterer. If you're in Britain and you watch a show, a popular show called Salvage Hunters, then you will recognize Craig Hughes. He's famous. He's on TV. Craig, you must be so rich. It's unbelievable. I'm not, not as rich as you, though, David. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not on the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the channel you're on, it's Quest. I think you get paid more money than we do on the BBC. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> so I can see you're at work. You're busy. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'd spend probably, I don't know, 60% of my life in work, uh, unfortunately. But the upside is I do enjoy what I do. So, yeah. Well, it has its that, ups and downs. But isn't that the key? You know, doing something that you enjoy then yeah. you know, what's the old saying, you know, find yeah, something you I, love and you'll never work a day in your life. I mean, is, is that you? Are you doing what you really want to be doing? I, I, I am to a degree. Um, the biggest, I mean, I, I don't want to sound disrespectful to customers, but um, if, if I could stand at my bench and somebody bring me jobs and say, here's a job, this is what you need to be doing, uh, and I, I've got all my own saying things, then that's fine. Uh, it's when I've got to stop and deal with customers or do do estimates or you know, things that I feel I feel like I'm wasting my time doing when I could be doing something I do enjoy. Uh, oh, but it's all part and parcel. It is. And I do fully understand that. You want to get your hands dirty and involved and, you know, express your creativity because you restore antique pieces of upholstery and, and you do classic car interiors. This is, yes. this is your kind of, inter, your inner interior designer coming out, Craig. That's, that's right. I mean, I, again, I, I'm leaving the interior designers to one side because they're, they're, they're a different hey. entity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I like it when, when somebody brings a job in and they'll say to me, I don't know what to do with this. And it's entirely up to you. What I'll do is get it on the bench. I could, I've got free reign over that. How I do the job, best way of upholstering it, all the different techniques is all left to me. The only thing I then will discuss with the customer is regarding fabric choice. That's entirely up to them because they know what their house is like. They know what their decor is like. So that's when the, we will discuss something with the client. But it's always... I prefer that rather than somebody coming in going, I want this, 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 and this, because then, because they don't do upholstery, sometimes it's not feasible. You know, they could, they could come in with a, an antique chair and say, I want this fabric putting on there looking like this modern chair, and yeah. you can't do it. But that's often the case, isn't it? That's often a bit of a frustration when people tell you how to do your job. But you're very, your work is very hands-on. Now, I know this because many years ago I had – an upholstery business. I'm, I, I'm not an upholsterer, but I employed 14 upholsterers and we were restoring right. antique pieces of furniture, you know, sofas yeah. and, and making as well. And I know the strength required in an upholsterer's fingers, Craig. That's the right, yeah. pulling is intense. Now tell it us is. a story about how you, you had a problem, didn't you, with one of your hands? Yes, I did, yeah. I like you say, all the strength is, I mean, I'm not a big person. I'm not a muscly person. I'm, you know, I'm quite a scrawny. But the strength, I've got really strong hands. My wrists and my forearms are, are strong. Now, during lockdown, obviously, we could still come into work because we were self-employed. So we came into work. We caught up with everything we had to do. But then the issue we had was customers weren't allowed to come into us. We weren't allowed to bring jobs in. So our work dried up. Uh, we still had a waiting list, but we couldn't do anything at work. So we spent a lot of time at home. And we've got quite a nice garden, quite a big garden. So we spent a lot of time in there. Now, we were out doing gardening duties, and I decided I'll cut some hedges. Uh, so we've got a big petrol hedge cutter. Uh, my wife says to me, it's starting to rain. I think we should go in now. I said, I'll just cut the top of this hedge here. So I climbed on a big pile of stone and had the pe petrol hedge cut and I'm going over my head with it. And I slipped on the stone. And as I slipped, I could see the hedge cutter coming down. So I put my hand up to stop it hitting my head. 
and I took the end off my finger. Uh, now I have got pictures if you if you're not squeamish. I've got pictures if you wanted to see them. <laughs> uh, I don't know whether I do, but send them, and I might drop them over the video. Go on. Right. Okay. Right. So I cut cut the end off my finger. Oh. Now it wasn't a complete finger, but it was the end of a finger. Now with upholstery, it's, an upholstery is a strange sort of job. Now, if you're doing secretarial work or you're doing maybe building work or something, if you're left or right handed, you will use your left or right hand more than anything else. Now, with upholstery, what you tend to do is I'm left handed. So I'll hold all my tools in my left hand. And while I'm working on a job, I'll pull the fabrics with my right hand and then I'll hold them all in position or I'll pull things and then I'll fasten them with my left hand. Now, the issue is I did the end of my finger on my right hand. Now, that now is the, that's, it doesn't move now. So what they've suggested is they amputate it from there. So I've took the end off it and it's gone right through the bone, but now my finger doesn't, uh, so that's getting in my way all the time. So, so hang on a minute, Craig, hang on a minute, because we, 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 we lost the sound a little bit. Show us your finger. Right, so that's that's my finger now. That's all it does. It won't bend any more than that, even though I only cut the end of it off. Lift it up again. So that's, right. that's when I clench your fist, that's, that's in the way all the time. So what I did was I cut the end off it. It went right through the bone and everything. So it went off across there. The other issue I've got is uh, it's very sensitive and there's just the bone underneath a layer of skin. Can you lift it up muscle. again so we can see what you're talking about? So what I've got is it the, cuts uh, sorry, it off. Just in front of the camera, Craig. Which, ah, there we go. There you go. Uh, this, That's a bit this, of a rude one. It's rude now. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> just because I'm on the BBC. <laughs> because you earn more money than me. That's what it is. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so I cut that across. Uh, you can see it's some funny angle. A lot of it's grown back, but just underneath, uh, the light's in the way, isn't it? But just underneath there is the bone. There's no pulp or fat underneath there. So the bone's right underneath there. So anything that touches it is really sensitive. The cold or anything, it's just a thin layer of skin on that. But my biggest issue is this, with it not, with it not, so when I go to pull some fabric, as I would pull it like that, or work on a job, I can't because this is getting in the way all the time. Um, so they have suggested amputation from here, so get rid of the finger completely. Are you um, going to do that? I don't know. I'm trying to get it moving, but it's been a couple of years now since lockdown, and it's not improving. The only thing I have managed to do is cope with it. Uh, and my biggest thing has been with it is frustration. Uh, when I first did it, now when when I first did it, I was filming at the time, uh, and production companies as they are, we need to get this in the bag, we need to get this finished, and I'm going well, cut the end off my finger, I've had surgery on it, and it's all strapped up. Oh, we need to finish it, we need to finish it. So if you watch one of the programs, you'll actually see me with my hand strapped up. That's two days after I cut the end of it off, and by the end of me filming, there was blood everywhere, and I burst it all open again. Uh, but you will on one of the shows you will see me actually with it all strapped up trying to work uh, but yeah it, it was more the because I'm always hands on I'm always doing trying to do anything with my hands strapped up I couldn't sit around doing nothing then trying to use my hand again uh, was really difficult it's, it's even now I'm still trying to cope with it and get to terms with it but it, a lot of it isn't physical it's mental it's it's being able to say to myself you can't do this or you can't do that it is i know at the time the sheer frustration i used to lose my temper because i couldn't do something or because my finger sticks out i was knocking things over going to get a cup and you you, you automatically reach out to get a cup but if your finger stuck out you're knocking yeah. the cup over um and it's just simple things like that I mean, what if you say to me, just calm down, will you? Calm down. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's easy for somebody to say that, but when you're in that position, and it might only be a finger, uh, but the amount of use you do, you know, you wouldn't realise how much you would use a finger to 
even now with with my right hand if i've got a handful of tacks in my right hand i would normally hold them like that and then get them out one at a time but with this hand i've got them like this and they just so if i've got a handful of tacks they're just falling out everywhere so i can't hold things in my right hand properly uh and it is it's frustrating but I don't know. I mean, the easiest issue for me, the easiest solution for me would just be to have it taken off at that joint there. Uh, but when you've got a finger that looks good and for all intents and purposes, a healthy finger, it seems a shame to have it taken off. I mean, when, when I first did it, I would have just said, yes, take it off, you know, take it off from there straight away. That would have been the easiest option. Um, what what has been I, the most difficult for you to deal with? The, the, the physical... Uh, you know issues or the mental issues because you must be thinking you know is my career well, how is my career going to go you know uh, it's going to be like this for the rest of my life what was more difficult the physical or the mental yeah. now it's the physical it's uh, this present moment it's what I can't do what I should be able to do and I get annoyed with the fact that I'm going I should be able to pick that up I should be able to do this I should be able, you know so at the moment it is physical but when it first happened, it was mental. It was, it was, how am I going to cope? Am I ever going to be able to use my hand again? Am I ever going to be able to do upholstery again? Uh, and then when you're doing just the smallest of things, uh, when it first happened, you know, like I was saying, picking up a cut or anything like that, uh, you're thinking, I can't even do that. You know, how am I going to be able to start upholstering again? Um, and it is, it is all that side of things. And mentally, I beat myself up, you know, because I was wanting to do things, I, I was feeling like I should be able to do things. Um, and it, it is just that pure frustration. Now, Craig, let me ask you, how do you feel now about general things in life? Because I think you know, as we get older, we come across issues you know, in relationships, in work, in it, problems and physical and, and mental things. Um, how has it made you think about life and taking for granted the little fingers, the fingers that we all have on our hands. Has yeah. it made you think differently about things? It has, because, because of what's happened with my hand and since lockdown, I've looked at everything totally different. And what we're trying to do now is wind things down a little bit. So because we spend so much time in work, because we've always got a full order book, you feel obliged to work and work and work. But what's happening then is we're neglecting our social life, we're then neglecting going away. And all that then obviously starts affecting you and it affects relationships. So it's, it's, it's difficult to try and have this balancing act. So like I say, since lockdown and since I've done my finger, we've said, right, we're going to try and wind it down a little bit, uh, try and get more time away <clears throat> and... If, if I could get a little workshop at home, then I could downsize everything where I could do things at my leisure then. Because at the moment, when you've got when you've got an up and running business, when you've got overheads, you've got to meet all those. So, you know, if you've got jobs and you're thinking, really, I've got to go in because the bills have got to be paid. Whereas if I've got somewhere a bit smaller or a bit more manageable, I don't need to have the same expectations. So that the, the accident with the finger may well turn out to be a good thing because you may wind down a, a bit sooner than you may well have done, you know, when you've still got the rest of your health to enjoy life with family and wife and all of that. So do you think there'll come a point where you might just think, you know what, that dodgy finger, it's done me a world of good? Yeah, I mean, that could well be the case, you know, where it's, it's sort of saying to me, you know, knock it on the head earlier than I would have done. And it's like my wife always says to me, I'll, I'll never retire because I can't sit and do nothing. I've yeah. always got to be doing something. But I, I enjoy, the, I've got so many other things I do. I restore classic cars, motorbikes. Uh, uh, at home, I do stone masonry. Uh, there's lots of different things I enjoy doing. Um, and again, these are things I feel, it's like therapy for my finger and for my brain. Uh, but it's, again, they are getting neglected because I'm spending so much time trying to work and I do need to prioritise. We do need to get things in order. So it's made you prioritise. And, and finally then, Craig, any words of wisdom about uh, yeah. prioritising life? Yeah, I, I mean, I, my, my only thing I can say, and this comes from personal experiences, just don't spend all your time working. You know, take some time out and, 
enjoy things you want to do because I've neglected everything I want to do. And it takes a dodgy finger for you to realise that. It, yes, it has. Yeah, and it's taken it's taken me nearly all my life and a dodgy finger to to realise that I've neglected things. Well, I think that's really good sage advice, Craig Hughes. Really good to see you. Thanks very much. Thank indeed. you. No problem, David. All right. Thanks. Thanks. All right.